For our project, we will be looking at the Goldberg and Tarjan max flow push relabel algorithm, as well as two heuristics that improve on Goldberg and Tarjan's original algorithm. And so this algorithm uses two main operations to solve maximum flow for a weighted directed graph with no negative flows. Now the first one is pushing, uh, which pushes excess flow to adjacent vertices. The second one is relabeling, which increases the label of a vertex uh, to make adjacent vertices available to push to. Uh, this algorithm works by temporarily allowing vertices to accept more inflow than outflow, so they're called active nodes, uh, and then resolves these active nodes one by one uh, using these push and relabel operations. Uh, the generic algorithm uh, chooses the next active node uh, to resolve arbitrarily, uh, but the two heuristics we'll be going over uh, change the way that the next active node is chosen uh, to be resolved, and this runs until there are no longer any active nodes and all unusable flow is eventually pushed back to the source. We will now do a simple walkthrough of the algorithm with the FIFO heuristic on the graph shown. With this initial graph, we have a flow of five. This can obviously be improved on. To start, we initialize the flow coming out of each node to be zero and the height at each node to be zero, except for the source. The height at the source is five, which indicates there are five nodes in the graph. First, we send the maximum capacity out of the source, which is 10 going to A and five going to B. We add A and B to our active vertex set. We will now look at A. We begin by sending five of the capacity at A to C, and we must relabel node A to have a height of one. A must have a greater height than C in order to send flow to it. After we've sent five from A to C, we still have an excess of five in A with no other edges exiting A, so we must send five back to the source. Now that there's an excess of zero in A, we can remove it from the active vertex set. Now we'll look at B. B has an excess of five. So we will send five of the flow <clears throat> in B to our sink. We must also relabel the height at B to be one in order to send it to the sink. We now have an excess of zero in B, so it can also be removed from the active vertex set. Next we'll look at node C. C has an excess of five but it can only have four sent out of it to the sink. So we'll send four out of C to our sink, relabel C to have a height of one, but we still have an excess of one in C, which means we must send it back to the source. We begin by sending it to A. We then must relabel C again to have a height of seven in order, in order for it to have a higher, a greater height than node A. We must then add A back to our active vertex set because there is an excess of one in node A. Finally, we send the one from A back to the source. So we're sending six from A back to the source. A now has an excess of zero and we can remove A from the active vertex queue. And we now have a max flow of nine. These are some of the most important methods uh, from our implementation of the generic algorithm. Uh, next active returns the next active node uh, that will either push flow or be relabeled. The push method uh, pushes excess flow from one node to an adjacent node. Uh, the relabel method uh, increases uh, the height of an active node uh, to make pushing possible in the future. And the get, next, get max flow method uh, sums the flows outgoing from the source I to return the max flow at the end of the algorithm. Now we're going to talk about the FIFO heuristic. This heuristic makes use of a queue in terms of selecting the vertices to dispose of next. Um, this is actually what we used to in our walkthrough because it's the easiest to one visually represent and two easiest to understand. Um, this specific heuristic comes out to, with the time complexity of vertices cubed. Yes, this is bad, but for the the problem that we're dealing with, this is actually not that bad. This Time complexities actually makes this heuristic really good at dealing with uh, edge dense graphs. Um, when there are lower amounts of vertices and lots of edges, like in a complete graph, um, this is where this this heuristic really shines. Uh, however, the, the, the flip side to that is um, graphs with large amounts of nodes, um, it becomes progressively harder and harder to develop a solution for this. 
Um, the next heuristic we're going to talk about is the highest order heuristic. Um, this heuristic selects the highest labeled active vertex, which is the height that we were talking about in the visualization. Um, that's the, the highest label. That's what we mean by that. It, um, and it selects that one to dispose of next because that's the most ideal vertex to work with next based on the, the necessary boundaries of the problem. Again, this removes the arbitrary node selection and produces a time complexity that's actually quite interesting. Um, it gives us vertices squared times um, the square root of our edge set. Um, this is the most ideal um, time complexity in terms of like overall most graphs. Most graphs that will be run with this heuristic will will have relatively good time complexity. However, it's not specialized in any particular graph, which means there are openings and unique cases where other um, heuristics and findings will be um, more will be have a better time complexity. 